so bare skin i have my moisturizer sitting on i'm not using spf today because it's pouring with rain outside i'm not going out so just moisturizer is enough the moisturizer will just help to make sure that our makeup has something to sit on top of and it will grip hold of the makeup so much more for you. You don't necessarily need to use a primer every single time you do your makeup, but you do need to moisturize your skin, not just for the sake of your skin, but also for the sake of the makeup that you're going to be applying. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of concealer. I want to cover up any of the discoloration that I have around here. My skin is being very active lately. The closer I get to you know that time of the month, the more my skin really shows discoloration and particularly the older and older you get this is for my mature friends out there you want to watch for around the eyes and around the nose if you make sure that these areas have good coverage that works for your overall skin tone those areas will seriously make you look so glowy and so healthy and so vibrant it'll make a massive difference so you really want to focus on those areas for my mature friends out there even for me i'm getting there i'm getting older <laughs> as we all are and we're all lucky to get older those are the areas that i want to focus on today i also have this blemish that showed up yesterday because it knew i was filming today and it was like not without me i'm not going to go over the top because i don't want a full coverage look this is a quick and easy simple type of a look. This is just to look more put together. Again, I will link what I've used below because I don't want to necessarily talk about brands. However, I am a brand ambassador for Blank Canvas Cosmetics, so I do want to show you this. This is the D08, and it has that dome shape, and it also has a concealer brush on the other side, which is a dome shape as well. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply everything with this brush today. I'm going to take my concealer and I'm just going to focus this where I need coverage. This blemish, by the way, is not an active blemish. It's dried out completely. It's just still red. What you don't want to do is to go and use your brushes on active blemishes because it will just transfer any of the activity onto your brush and then it can spread everywhere else. So this one is not active, so it's not going to spread anything. And I really did the eyes last with whatever's left over because I don't want too much around the eyes. I actually don't mind my dark circles. I don't have very dark circles, but I actually don't mind them. As you can see, I haven't blended this out yet, but I'm gonna use whatever's left over on the brush to just go around my lids, just to apply a sheer wash of brightness. And then I'm going to blend out the edges of the concealer so that it blurs and blends into the skin. I want coverage here and then I want it to go and like smooth out and disappear into the rest of the skin. I'm still adjusting to my new lights and they're creating the weirdest shadows on my face. Doesn't that look like I don't really have any concealer on? At least for me in real life. Probably on camera it's showing because it's on like extreme high definition. I'm going to apply a light layer of powder foundation in a second. But before I do that, before I touch my face with any powder, I'm going to fix up my brows. So this is a brow tint. This is great when you are in a hurry because it's gonna do two things. It's going to shape your brows because it's a brow gel, but it also has fibers in it and some tint in it. So it's going to fill them in as well. And the reason I do this before I touch my face with any powder, it can catch the little baby hairs. I kind of overdid it on purpose so you can see, see how it's catching and kind of creating this like blown out look we want to clean that up so what you can do to clean up take a little q-tip and go around with some makeup remover so i'm just going to rub this around the edges so my brows are on i have a little bit of coverage and now i'm going to go in with a powder foundation so i'm going to be using two shades of powder foundation i'm going to be using a light one and a dark one a lighter shade pretty much matches my actual skin which is ghostly pale and then my darker shade is about two shades darker which pretty much matches my tan if not about a shade darker than my tan and then i just mix up the two of them this means that i can customize them to say match my fake tan that i have have, which I haven't applied onto my face. Then I can also use one for brightening the center of my face, use the other one for darkening, kind of slightly contouring the rest of my face. So that's why I always use two different shades, a light and a dark. Now the reason I use powder foundations is because they're so quick and easy. I don't have to then go ahead and set them with anything except for maybe a setting spray. So I have my two foundations in front of me and I'm going to mix and match these and I'm going to be using this brush to apply this. Now depending on the tool that you use to apply your powder foundation will depend on the coverage that you're going to get from it. If you like full coverage, you're gonna to wanna to use a dry sponge or a velvet powder puff. This will give you maximum coverage. If you want kind of a medium to full coverage, go for a slightly smaller brush, something that's going to give you a lot of control, that's going to pick up the product really well. And if you want a sheer, just 
quick kind of a look, use a larger powder brush. This is a great in-between because it's a little bit of both. It's gonna give me decent coverage, but it does have a lot of movement in it. So it's also going to blend it and sheer it out if I want to. So I'm gonna go in with a mixture of both of my shades and I'm just gonna test it on my jaw before I start applying it everywhere, just so I can make sure that it is matching my tan and i'm doing little circular motions working along the jaw and then what i can do is as there's less product on the brush i can bring this upwards and i can slowly start to blend over any areas that i might have oils so it's kind of the opposite to using a liquid foundation liquid foundations you tend to start in the middle and blend out with powder foundations i like to almost blend from the outer edge and blend in just so i can make sure that i'm not going to have one area that's going to hold too much foundation. So this just allows me to get it on the face and I'm gonna start really blending this across here. And then because this has a very sheer, very light leftover product onto the cheeks, it means I can then go straight in with a little bit extra and build up the coverage. I'm also gonna bring this over my eyelids just to give me a little bit of coverage. And that's just layer number one, so just all over kind of even. Now what I can do is, because it's super quick, is I'm gonna take the lighter shade and I'm just going to tap this underneath my eyes. This is going to brighten underneath my eyes. I'm gonna brighten the edge of my nose, a little bit on the chin and a little bit on the center. And then I'm gonna take the darker shade and only use the darker shade instead of mixing it and work around the hairline into the hollow and then onto the jaw. Then if you want a little bit extra coverage, you can take your concealer brush or a slightly smaller brush or even a sponge, a dry sponge, and just take a little bit of your product and tap it where you need extra coverage. Essentially what we've done now is we've applied an even layer all over and we've kind of contoured and highlighted our face and even just applied a little bit of a base over our eyes. I then like to take my brush and very lightly just go over the face in a downward motion. This is just gonna make sure we're removing any excess powder and kind of knocking it off the skin. But also if we have any dry patches, this is just gonna make sure those dry patches are going to be sitting down. Also those little hairs on the face that we all have to. Now you might notice something, maybe some of you have, maybe some of you haven't, but do you see how this brow is slightly darker than this one? That's because I took a Q-tip and I just went over the brows just to remove any excess powder that might have attached to our brows. So just take a Q-tip. You can even just apply a very small amount of makeup remover. Don't make sure it's not dripping. Don't drip it. You can even just put it onto a tissue and then just dampen this on the tissue and then just run over the brows to remove any excess powder. But if you start to see that there's color transfer onto here, you're pressing too hard because that means that you're removing the gel. Now, if you find that your face looks a little powdery after you've applied powder foundation, go in with a setting spray. This will literally bring it back to life. I always recommend using the long lasting sprays. So don't necessarily look for a hydrating or a mattifying. Go for the long lasting sprays. They tend to have a better feel and look over the top of powder foundation, at least in my experience. And you also want to make sure you are staying quite far back. So even if you usually set your makeup here like this, when you have powder foundation on, you need to go a bit further back because otherwise the molecules will grab hold of the skin and create little kind of droplets. And then it will take a little bit of that powder and create these little speckles. We don't want speckles. Freckles maybe, but not speckles. I like to just go a little further back as far as I can go and then just go tap like this. Spray in the opposite direction. Make sure it's not clogged and then you're ready to go. I know you're gonna be like, but that wastes a spray. Trust me, what you don't wanna do is spray this on your face if it's clogged because it'll literally go and then you'll just have water dripping down your perfectly done face. We don't want that. So spray in the opposite direction, make sure it's not clogged and then you're ready to go. Where's my fan? Then get yourself a fan you will use it more often than you think. Particularly for my older friends out there, you're going through the menopause, get yourself a fan. Look at that, look at that lift. Oh my goodness. Microwaving instead of baking. If you don't have much time, of course you can microwave.